design an audio product for Meta. Hey everyone, welcome back to another Exponent product management mock interview. Today we have a very exciting product sense question that we want to go through. We're going to be doing this with Bala. And before we get started, Bala, do you want to just introduce yourself and let the audience know like where you are right now? Sure. Thanks, Kevin. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Bala. I'm a product manager at Meta right now. Um, I previously worked with Amazon and uh, Morgan Stanley Wealth Management also as a PM. I personally found the Exponent Mock Interview videos incredibly helpful during my own interview prep process. So I'm very excited to be here today. Awesome. And we did not pay Bala to say that or anything. <laughs> I did cool. not. <laughs> I confirm. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm very happy to hear that. And thanks for, you know, using the videos and coming back and giving back to the community. I'm sure like all the people who are watching will find this super helpful. So we're going to do a product sense or product design question today. And this is the question I want to ask. Design an audio product for Meta. Um, is it okay if I take a couple of minutes just to, you know, think about it, come up with a few clarifying questions? Yeah, of course. Okay, um, I have a few clarifying questions I'd like to go over first. Um, is there like a specific app or surface within Meta's family of apps and devices that they build that we want this to be a part of, integrated into? Or is that more of, you know, strategy that I get to define as I go through this brainstorming process? Yeah, that's a good question. There's certainly a lot of products within Meta's family, I think I'll largely leave it up to you and you're welcome to let me know like um, later, like why you think that's the best place to start. Got it. Sounds good. Um, one other thing I'd like to build for the US marketplace, just for the sake of this conversation, because, um, you know, I'm, I'm more aware of the audio related trends in the US and I'm sure we can learn and expand to other locations from that. Does that sound okay? Yeah. Yeah. This constraints reasonable. Sounds great. Um, with that, I want to lay out a, just a broad uh, roadmap for how I'm going to approach this problem, um, and then we'll dive right in. So um, I like to start off with answering the question, like, why do we even want to build an audio product? Does it make sense to build an audio product? Um, once we understand the why, I will then dig into who are we building uh, the product for? Um, what user segments. And then once we identify user, user segment, um, I'll then go into brainstorming a few pain points and um, then get into uh, what solutions potentially can be built to alleviate some of those pain points. Does that sound reasonable? Yeah, yeah, I like the structure. Cool. Um, with that, uh, I'll take just a few moments and come back to you with uh, why are we even exploring building an audio product? Okay, so a few thoughts um, about the audio space overall. I think audio in general has been uh, booming um, over the past two plus years. Um, one quick stat that comes to mind is Spotify, which is the biggest audio streaming platform in the world. Um, I think they saw like a 50% increase in their paid subscribers um, from 2020 March to now. Um, so, you know, it, there's definitely a trend of consumers leaning into audio very heavily. Um, layering, layering on top of that, just the fact that certain types of audio are, they create really sticky habits in people. Um, what I mean by that is specifically spoken word, which is podcasts, books, so on and so forth. Like these are not things people do for a day and then never come back to. If, if a person really engages with a certain creator or a certain type of um, uh, content, they, they come back to it over and over again. So it creates very sticky habits in people. So I think overall, you know, given the heavy increase in consumption of audio, plus the fact that it's a pretty sticky habit, as we go into a post-COVID world, when people are going to have um, again, lesser time um, to, at hand, they're going to be, you know, maybe going to work or just being outside more. I think audio will continue to remain very relevant. And I anticipate it will continue to remain very relevant because 
it's one of those activities which can be like passively happening in the background while people do other things, um, be it picking up groceries or traveling to work or whatever that might be versus other types of media like video, for example, which requires uh, more focus from you. Um, so I think for all these reasons, audio as a space in general, I think very positive signals. Um, with that said, I wanna pause a moment to acknowledge what the mission of Meta is. Um, Meta, Meta's mission is to bring the world closer together and give people the power to build community community right um so when i think of an audio product in the context of that mission the first thought that comes to mind is i think the nature of media consumption itself is such that it almost forms the foundation of how people bond together and i say that because we often find that's why that we want to consume media with the people that we love and care for. And it's the vice versa is also true. Like we bond better with people uh, who have the same kind of interests, right? Like who watch the same kind of shows, consume the same kind of podcasts, books, so on and so forth. Um, so I think fundamentally um, there, I see like a direct connection between being able to make people feel closer to one, one another bond um, and allowing them to do that through an audio consumption experience, if that makes, makes sense. sense. Yeah, so like what you're saying is based on the positive signals in the market, trends, as well as the ability for audio to help people form communities, it makes a lot of sense for Meta to pursue this direction. 100%, yeah. So I, I think just given Meta's strengths with respect to the social graph, I think there's an opportunity here to actually help people come closer together and feel a sense of community through audio listening experiences. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Um, super curious now to see like which users we want to focus on, who we'll be designing for. Cool. Um, I'll just take a few moments to think through what the, you know, who the players are in the ecosystem and what the segmentation of users is going to be. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Broadly, I think the players in the ecosystem are, you know, listeners creators um, and platforms like Spotify, Apple, iTunes um, that host audio content. Um, and I had a bucket for like other entities who end up producing audio um, as a byproduct of other things they're doing like brands and movies, theaters, sports teams, you know, as a part of what they do, they end up producing audio content. Um, for the purpose of this conversation, I want to focus on listeners, and I say that, you know, acknowledging there's a lot of focus on building creator tools um, for indie creators, especially people, you know, who want to start their own podcasts, whatever that might be. But again, for the purpose of this conversation, I want to focus on the listener side, because I think ultimately they are the consumers, and if the consumers really engage with the product, then the product is successful. Got it. So like, I guess like what we're saying also is that for the listeners, like these are the core users that Meta cares about, right? Like we have like all these users who come to consume content, photos, posts, um, and maybe like maybe a hypothesis is that if we have the right listener base, then like the creators, the brands, they will come naturally. 100%. Yep. Got yeah. it. Cool. Yeah. So further digging into how I would want to segment listeners, um, I thought of like two ways in which I could do that. One is by demographic, and I do that intentionally because uh, there's this research that comes to mind uh, based on demographic, how audio listening behaviors vary. Um, so I wanna segment them by users who are teens and young adults, 12 to 34, which is also the user base that Meta heavily wants to you know, build trust, build engagement. Um, and then there's people 35 to 55, 55 and above. Another way to segment, I think, is also uh, based on the type of audio that people consume. Um, there's music, there's spoken word, which includes podcasts and podcasts and books. Um, there's also live radio. Um, and the reason I segment by type of audio content is, again, um, I think there's been a huge uptick in podcast consumption, specifically with an audio, and we've seen that music has been losing share to spoken word with an audio consumption. Uh, so I also think that's an interesting trend um, to keep in mind. And therefore, you know, these are the two types of segmentation I came up with. 
for this discussion, I want to look at uh, the intersection of users who are teens and young adults and people who listen to podcasts. I do that as, um, you know, users who are teens and young adults, we've seen that I think 86% of them listen to audio actively. And by actively, it means um, they literally listen to at least two hours of audio um, every day. And on an average per week, they listen to like 16 hours of audio. So it Is seems to be- study? Was that from the same study that like- Yeah, that I forget like which study exactly this is, but I know I've read like, a, I've worked in Alexa Audio. So like I've, okay. I've read a whole bunch of papers at some point <laughs> on yeah. this topic. So um, it's a, basically the summary is, you know, very high uh, audio consumption trends in that demographic. And I also say podcasts because podcasts has been a big bet for Spotify for a lot of audio platforms. Um, and we are seeing, again, that uh, when we just look at audio consumption overall, that uh, music is actually losing share to podcasts. Um, and that's not to say that the product we end up building will not be applicable or usable by users in a different demographic or users who listen to a different kind of audio. Uh, I think it's very much going to be applicable to adjacent user groups. But oh, for yeah. the sake of this discussion, I want to focus there. Yep. Yep. Cool. Um, with that, um, I want to quickly uh, maybe jot down a few pain points of this particular user segment, and then I'll come back to you. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Um, so the way I like to think of pain points is almost think of it as the user goes through the journey of uh, discovering the product, actually using the product, and what they do after the pro using the product. Um, so in this case, in the discovery phase, I think one of the biggest pain points that stood out to me is um, I don't get contextual or proactive recommendations for what to listen to or what to consume. So the discovery process itself is, uh, it, it, it's a lot of work for me uh, to find the right content. So it's a lot like based on like what you actively go and search for and it's based on like, like you, you in the search bar. Exactly. And I think the user group we're talking about are people with, uh, you know, very short attention span, lots of things to do, and they're used to technology working for them. So that's also why I think during the discovery phase this is one of the top pain points that stood out to me. Um, once people are actually consuming audio, I think for me personally, at least as an audio consumer, one of my biggest pain points is, is it's a very isolating experience listening to audio today. Um, I tend to get bored and lose focus very quickly <laughs> when I'm in the middle of listening to a podcast or listening to a book. Like I have to intentionally put a lot of effort to continue focusing and stay engaged with the content. Um, the other pain point, um, again, for this demographic and specifically for spoken word, I think is I can't really feel a personal one-on-one -on -one connection with the creators of the content. And this is, I know, becoming increasingly important for, again, this demographic, and especially in the context of spoken word, um, to, to have that kind of one-on-one -on -one human connection with the creators. Um, the other pain point um, I listed here is I can't take my audio with me wherever I go. Like, say I'm listening at home and I have to quickly go, go for a run or whatever that might be. I'm not able to quickly, you know, transition audio across devices and just take it with me wherever I'm going. Um, it's funny I listed this because I actually built a product to solve for this when I was at Alexa, which is live now. <laughs> so I, I'll just put in a plug for that there. Um, <laughs> but uh, that was one of the, you know, again, it, it's only possible if you have an Alexa enabled device, so on and so forth. So that's a pain point I could think of if you're consuming audio on some other device, which is not Alexa enabled. Um, and then finally, after I finish listening to a podcast or, or an audiobook, um, I currently don't have an easy way to share clips or snippets from the content I just consumed with, um, you know, not the whole content, but just clips that really inspired me or really moved me, right, um, with my network, with my friends and family. Um, so that's another pain point that I listed. Um, of these pain points, I think 
I want to um, I want to prioritize the pain point where I talked about it's it's an isolating, boring experience, um, and also the pain point where I said I can't really share, and I want to do that because I think they align really. Um, they're really intense pain points, especially as an audio consumer. I think I have found that I experience them the most, and I feel like that's the biggest gap: not being able to, uh, not having the right uh, technology support to actually be engaged, and also not being able to easily share them out uh, more broadly. Um, I also think they play really closely into Meta's mission of, um, you know, allowing people to feel closer to other people while they're doing activities and allowing them to feel that sense of community. Got it. Um, how about like ROI? Do you think like this is the pain point with like the most ROI? I think that um, when you saw, I have at least historically found that when you solve the pain point, which has, which, which is most intense, uh, which is the most intense pain point, you end up usually getting the highest ROI, which is highest engagement from people as a response to that. So. Um, that's one of the reasons I think these are the pain points I want to pick. Nice. I like that. I like the, the idea of like trying to provide the most value to the user. Um, cool. So yeah, um, we can go, go with this. And then I'm curious to see like what kind of solutions you have in mind. For sure. Um, before we get into the solutions, Kevin, I wanted to take a moment to just um, define what the vision is going to be for this product, because I think that's going to then help me prioritize between different solutions. Um, so I'll take just a few moments to come up with a vision and then come back to you. Okay. Okay. Um, we may have talked about this briefly, but I think it just helps to concretely state the vision before we get into solutions, even in real world. Um, so it's just a practice I love. Um, so the vision I have for this product is we want to help people feel closer to one another and feel a sense of community through fun and engaging audio listening experiences. Um, and I think that lines up really well with the pain points that we've picked around isolation and wanting to share more, more broadly as well. Cool. So through fun and engaging audio experiences, do you, do you envision this? Well, I, I guess like, I don't want to get into solution. So uh, let me save my question for later. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll let you continue. Um, I have four solutions listed here. The first one, I call it... Um, communal listening or listen together. And what this is going to look like is very similar to the watch together product of um, Meta, and it, it exists within their messenger product um, interface. Um, you basically can be on a call with your friends, family, whoever, and then start listening to something together, just like you can watch something together today. Um, the second, without getting into too much details, I'll quickly go yeah. through all the different solutions. The second solution I have is interactive audio. Um, the thing I had in mind while coming up with this was the Netflix show Black Mirror, where you can literally, um, you have to be engaged as a viewer. It's not a passive activity anymore. You have to be engaged to say, uh, what happens next? Like, do you want to do? Do you want to see A happen or B happen? And then that actually, you know. It, it, it's what drives what happens next on the show. So I think something similar um, would be great, especially for the pain point around, you know, feeling bored and, you know, feeling like it's an isolated experience and not feeling engaged enough. Um, and this can be on top of this, we can layer on like questions, uh, you know, once every 20 minutes or so within an audiobook listening session or a podcast um, listening session so that Again, users are engaged, and then we can have leaderboards of sorts for people to actually, you know, tout how well they're doing on um, uh, on going through the journey of listening to a certain audiobook or a podcast, etc. Um, the other thing I had, the other, the third solution I had was um, immersive audio, and what I was thinking here um, was obviously one the big bets uh, Meta is placing on AR VR, but um, from a customer standpoint, um, say I'm listening to a podcast about, uh, you know, something related to history, um, and I'm not actually traveling or whatever, then I, it would be really cool to have my Oculus headset on to actually be transported in time back to that, you know, uh, uh, time in history. 
Um, similarly, if I'm listening to like calming sounds or meditative sounds, which I do quite a bit, um, it would be really nice again to immerse myself fully in that theme of the podcast or the audiobook that I'm listening to. Um, I get that this is not always possible when you're like on the move, um, but I think it's a pretty cool use case um, for when someone's just um, listening to a podcast, but just want more immersive experiences while they're doing it. Nice. Can we dive deeper into some of these? So I, I think I'm like really curious about like the communal listening, the active listening, and like the immersive experience. Yep. Yep. One hundred percent. So, and the last solution I had was around okay. sharing. Um, yep. So it's it's around audio sharing, which again is going back to the pain point of I should be able to grab clips from whatever audio content I'm consuming and share it either with a family member, friend, or even more broadly through stories, reels, so on and so forth, um, with my broader Instagram network or Facebook network, if you will. Um, of these, I want to prioritize and dig deeper into the communal listening and the audio sharing um, uh, solutions. And the reason is I think they very closely align with the mission of Meta, but also the product vision that we set for this particular audio product. Uh, I think they make the process of um, listening very engaging and also uh, not just during the process of listening, but after give you um, something to share out more broadly with your network. Um, I also think that they meet the bar of what I call a minimum lovable product versus a minimum viable product. But at the same time, they balance that out with, you know, we, with these solutions, we are able to move fast we're able to launch and learn and iterate and build towards the more uh, high effort solutions like the interactive audio and immersive audio. Got it. Um, so what would like the sort of like end to end solution look like if I were like a user and then I'm coming to use this product, assuming it's already been fully built and shipped? Yep. Um, so for the commun communal listening or communal audio product, what I had in mind was It'll live alongside the watch together experience on Messenger today. So on Messenger today, once you go into a chat with someone, you literally have a pop-up uh, that you can click on that says watch together. And you can pick from a number of videos you can watch and you know start watching a video together, basically. I think I'm envisioning a very similar experience, but for audio, it can be a podcast or a book. Um, to begin with, but nothing stopping us from expanding to music and radio and so on. Um, and I think the the key here is again bonding over audio consumption. Um, and also when you're just consuming something with uh, someone, you're just more engaged than when you're doing it by yourself. Um, so that's what I was envisioning for the listen together experience. Um, for the audio sharing experience, I think we, we consume audio, I consume audio, you know, from Spotify, from I, Apple iTunes, all of these different uh, platforms. But when I really run into these moments of inspiration or things that really moved me um, from what I'm listening to, I want to have a quick way to grab, you know, a clip, an audio clip and share it out with uh, maybe one person through a message, but also uh, more broadly with my network through stories and reels and a post, so on and so forth. So uh, for that, what I'm envisioning it to be is I'm on, you know, one of these other platforms and I, th there's an external app integration that allows me to then grab a clip, but then share that clip out as a Facebook story or share that clip out as a Instagram reel or share that clip out as a post on, on Facebook um, or send it as a message in messenger, uh, you know, to my friends and family. Um, so that's what I was envisioning for the audio sharing product. Nice, nice. Um, I, I also love the idea that these both of these are like minimum lovable products. I love that idea. So let's say that like, you know, because of bandwidth constraints or resources, you can only pick one of them. Like which one would you prioritize? I know like we've already prioritized of the four, like these two. I think the listen together product would, you know, even between these two, if I had to pick one, that's what I would pick. And the reason I do, I say that is we've already identified the proved product market fit for watch together. Um, and listen together is going to be like almost, you know, sitting alongside watch together. So it, it's going to be a very intuitive way of bringing users into this new feature. 
um, uh, putting it alongside what already exists. Uh, the other reason is, I mean, there's no easy way to do this, to grab a clip today and, and share it out. But if I absolutely wanted to, I could, right? Mm -hmm. Like I could be playing an audio clip on my computer and I could record it and share it out as a post or a, bit, or a story um, or a reel. So I think there are like other ways I could do the audio sharing stuff. Yes, there's not like an easy way to do it. Um, so that's why I would prioritize listening together. But I also think like it, any product we'll build towards audio between these two will give us a good sense of um, how does it drive user engagement after? It, it'll give us a lot of signals to learn from and then build towards um, more engaging audio experiences. Makes sense, yeah. And I think the, the communal listening experience would probably drive like the vision of building community and making people feel closer together based on their interests a lot more. 100%, yeah. It, it closer alignment with the company's mission but also product's vision. Nice. Um, is there anything else you wanted to share? Or um, if not, I think like we're at a good point where we could maybe stop the mock interview and then maybe get into some feedback. Cool. I just wanted to call out there already, there, there are also like just inherent risks with either of these, all of these of course. solutions, right? There's mm -hmm. external partner integrations we're talking about. So we'll have to see how that works. We also have to think about, um, we have a huge video collection on Facebook Watch, but um, my guess is not as big as, of an, of an audio collection. So we'll have to think of, do we want people to start uh, hosting podcasts on Facebook or do we want to again, partner with other platforms that already host these podcasts and allow people to uh, co-watch or you know communally mm -hmm. listen to that content while being on Meta and how it all works out. So just wanted to call out like there are some inherent risks to each of these solutions, um, but I think further research and further analysis should help us get to what's the right approach. Of course, yeah. Um, okay, cool. Thanks for calling other risks as well. So um, overall, great mock interview. Um, starting from the top, right? I loved how you started with this framework, which was like, why, who, pain points, solutions. And I thought it was really strong that you inputted um, the vision right before you got into actual solutioning. I think that's what really separates people from like senior product from like junior product roles. Um, I also loved how you made sure to touch on all sides of the marketplace, uh, you know, not just the listeners, but the creators, you called out brands, businesses, anyone else who might be generating content. Um, and throughout the, the entire process, I, I could tell that you have expertise in, in, in the audio space, right? You, you, you mentioned like a study, it probably would have been better if, if I could like know what study that was, but I mean, that's not <laughs> entirely relevant, but it was really good to hear that um, you know, you, you had some strong opinions about the direction and they, they were fueled by some study that you had uh, uh, looked at before. I also loved how uh, you, you kind of sliced users like in a few different ways. Um, I think you, you slice them like by demographic, but also just like by the behavior, which was really powerful. Um, and uh, in structural wise, the, when it comes to solutioning, I think it, it's always really strong and this, this goes with like presenting in, at work also, right? Like giving just people like a, a thin slice of, of what you're going to talk about first before diving in super deep. Um, that was really helpful. Um, I think that's something that all interviewees should be doing in their interviews. I mean, not, not just in the solution part, like also in, this, in the users part, right? you have users A, B, and C, and then you go into like who the users are and then prioritizing. Um, and then finally, um, I, I, I just loved how you always tie things back to the mission back to the product vision. It just really made the story feel whole. Um, so thanks, Paula, for your time. And before we close out the video, is there like any tips you want to give the viewers before we, um, before we stop? Thanks, Kevin. Um, just a couple of things. I think um, th the way I enjoyed approaching these problems is how would I solve them in a, in a real world situation, right? Just putting on like your real product manager hat versus thinking of it as an interview situation, I think really helps take the stress out, helps you put on the customer hat and do what's best for customers as we always do. Another tip is I think really explaining your thought process as to why you're picking a certain segment, why you're picking a certain certain pain point or why a certain solution is uh, can go a long way because ultimately that's what interviewers are trying to gauge. Um, it's not really about do you get to the right solution, it's more of what's the process, what's the thinking, uh, logical and does that make sense so totally yeah and i think like a really big part of product management interviews is talking about the trade-offs 
right? Like uh, you, you were able to cite some study to tell us why you picked a certain user and behavior. Um, and you also went through and talked about, you know, like for, for, for the product, right? What's the impact? What's the mission? You talked about ROI. Um, these are all like really important things that the interviewer will be looking for. It, you know, there isn't really like a right answer for these product design, product sense questions. It's just really based on like what, what your approach was, how did you prioritize it? And it, it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. um, all in all, thank you, Vala, for your time. And for the viewers at home, good luck with your upcoming product management interview. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons below to let us know that this video is valuable for you. And of course, check out hundreds more videos just like this at tryexponent.com. Thanks for watching and good luck on your upcoming interview.